Alright, so this video is going to be about getting you ready for a lab. And this lab kind of has some um, intense data analysis. Basically what you're going to be looking for is a relationship between torque and angular acceleration. Okay, torque and angular acceleration. So remember that's going to be torque as in tau and angular acceleration as in alpha. We want to know what the relationship is between those two. So here is how we're going to do it. Okay, so here is a table. Okay, on your table you're going to have a ring stand. On top of the ring stand is going to be this apparatus that's able to spin. That apparatus looks like a big T. Okay, it's going to be made out of PVC. It's going to be like that. It's going to be a little bit more symmetrical. Okay, but it's going to be able to spin. So you're going to have some uh, string wrapped around it, and that string is going to be going over a pulley and that is going to be going to some hanging mass down here. All right, so how are we going to measure torque and angular acceleration? Well, the uh, uh, simple answer is, is that we're not. We're, gonna, we're not going to measure those specifically, but let's talk about torque. So the torque is going to be exerted right there. Okay? It's going to be exerted where the string is causing our T to spin. And if we take a look at a top-down view of where that string is, so we have the radius uh, or the, the PVC pipe, and that's what it's going to be made out of, and we're going to have a string coming off of it like this. So we have tension that is causing us to have a torque, and then there is a uh, radius here, which would be our, our moment arm or the R value for our torque. So torque would be the tension in the string multiplied by R, the radius of the PVC pipe. So that gives us torque. Now we have to figure out tension, because in order to get torque, we have to get tension. So if we do a free body diagram of our falling body here, we know that tension is going to be going up, and we know that force of gravity is going to be going down, and I'm actually going to use the actual equation here of m times g, but the whole thing is going to be accelerating downwards. So we can't say those two are going to be equal, but we can say is that torque, uh, excuse me, tension, and I'm going to get that confused, so tension minus the force of gravity on the hanging mass, m times g, has to equal m times a, right? That's just um, summation of forces equals m times a from the uh, Newton's second law, from the green sheet, which means that torque is equal to mg plus ma, or that, uh, so I think I said it again, tension. Tension is equal to the mass multiplied by gravity plus whatever that acceleration is going down. So now we have to, to measure acceleration. In order to get tension, we need acceleration. Well, that's pretty easy. We can put a little motion detector down here. Okay, the motion detector can then measure the, uh, the speed or the change in the speed of it, and you can get acceleration off of it fairly easy. So that gives us a value for acceleration. We know that's 9.8. We know this is a mass uh, of some value, m. So we know that. So that gives us tension. Once we know tension, we know the radius of the PVC pipe, and that gives us torque. So now we have torque. So how do we get angular acceleration? Well, we uh, used a little apparatus, a little sensor earlier last week that uh, we can actually use here. So the, the sensor was the rotary motion sensor. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have that sitting right up on top of our T. There's going to be a little insert where we can put that uh, uh, silver part of the rotary motion sensor that spins. So our rotary motion sensor will be able to get us alpha. It's going to be a little bit of uh, analysis for it, so let's, let's figure out what exactly we're going to get on our lab quest. So on our lab quest, we're going to have uh, two graphs. We're going to want one that's velocity versus time, and this is just going to be linear velocity. This is the motion detector. Okay, and then we're going to have one that is going to be angular velocity over time. And this is going to be the rotary motion sensor. Okay, now they're both going to show us that we're accelerating. So they're both going to show lines that look like that. And again, since they are velocity time graphs, both of them are technically velocity versus time graphs, what we need is the slope. The slope here gives us acceleration, or A, and the slope here gives us angular acceleration, or alpha. So that's literally what our lab quest is going to give us. Okay, These two graphs, velocity versus time and angular velocity versus time. And remember, 
We can get alpha by finding the slope of that. We can get a by finding the slope of its graph, and then m is going to be a certain value. So in order for us to get a relationship, that means that we have to change something about this and then measure our torque and our angular acceleration again. So how are we going to change? Are we going to change the, or what are we going to change? The angular acceleration or the torque? The easiest thing is going to be to change the torque. If we change the torque, that means we have to change the tension because we can't change the radius of the PVC pipe. So how do we change the tension? Well, the only way that we can is by changing whatever mass that's going to be here. So your procedure is going to have to have this mass changing. You're going to want to do four or five different masses. And you just run it. It'll go down. You'll measure acceleration. You measure angular acceleration. You'll have to calculate a torque. And uh, if all goes well, you will come out with a graph in your analysis section for torque and angular acceleration. And whatever the graph is, it could be linear, it could be quadratic, you know, whatever it comes out to be is going to be your relationship between those two functions. Okay, so uh, this is just a, lab, a video to get you acquainted with what this lab is going to be. As you can see, it's going to be slightly complicated. We're going to be merging a whole lot of stuff together. And uh, hopefully you take notes on this lab and come to class prepared because since I'm basically telling you how to do it, I'm not going to offer up a whole lot of help in class. All right. There will be a couple of questions below that you'll need to answer.